Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt, the order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is the uh, introduction to multi-threading. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, select begin. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the multi-threading intro. Every time you invoke a class containing the main method, you are running your compiled bytecode on a single thread called the main thread. Now when it comes to thread, the main thread is super important. Java gives us the ability to create and spawn child threads from the main thread. Now why on earth will we want to create additional threads? Well the answer to that question is only learned through experience. That's the kind of experience that makes your program appear to be hung up in an endless loop. Now let me give you a couple of examples. Let's imagine we have a program that downloads large images from a website to the local drive. Now depending on the connection speed, it may take 10 seconds or it may take 10 minutes. Either way, we need to interact with the user to let them know that our program is downloading a file and not just hung up in la-la land. If we put our code to download each image in a method that is invoked on the main thread, we would have no way to interact with the user while each statement in our method is executing. Now we can accomplish our goal by creating a class that will run on a new thread and then invoke an instance of that class from the code running on the main thread. The main thread can then provide your user with regular updates on the download progress at set intervals, say, you know, like every half second or so. Well, you know, of course, I will show you exactly how to just, how, um, I will show you exactly how to do just that only in a future tutorial. Now as another example, let's imagine that we have a program that is trying to determine if a bunch of very large numbers, I'm talking like hundreds of digits long, are prime. If we invoke a custom method on the main thread to begin calculations, then we could only calculate one number at a time. Not to mention our program might appear to be hung while it's calculating away. In addition to that issue, you might be underutilizing your computer if it contains a multi-core, multi-thread processor, which pretty much everything does these days. Now imagine if the main thread could launch 10 child threads with each one working to determine if another large number is prime. You would speed up your goal by a thousand percent and you would still be able to interact freely on the main thread. Bonus! Now at the top of the thread hierarchy is a class named thread and an interface named runnable. Every thread has a life cycle. Now the life cycle of a thread is well defined into a total of six states. Okay. New. New. A thread has been declared but is not yet started in this state. Runnable. In this state, a thread is executing in the JVM. Blocked. In this state, a thread is blocked waiting for a monitor lock or intrinsic lock. Now I'll explain, I'll explain what this means later on down the road. Don't worry about that for now here. Now waiting. A thread is waiting indefinitely for another thread to perform a particular action in this state. Timed waiting. A thread is waiting for another thread to perform an action for up to a specified waiting time in this state. And then terminated. A thread that has exited in this state. Now let's get started by toying around with some of the methods and properties of the main thread. Let's come down here to the source code and we'll just highlight this. Control C to copy. Right click or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen. And I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right-clicking, selecting New, Shortcut, CMD, Next, and Finish. Let's open up our command prompt, type in Java C. Java C is a Java compiler. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash cd is short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory here called java with the md command. I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Change directories to the java folder. I'm going to make a directory here, and I'm just going to call this one uh, uh, multi-threading uh, intro. Change directories to the multi-threading intro folder, and I'm going to notepad multi-threading intro.java Okay, I'm going to do control V to paste or right click and select paste. Oops, I don't want to paste that twice though. Um, okay, so pretty simple class here. Single class, main method, entry point. Um, basically the first thing I'm going to do in this statement right here is I'm going to create a reference variable MT, short for multi-thread. 
or main thread, sorry. Um, and it's going to be of thread type. Now, thread is part of the Java language, um, I believe, object package there. But anyway, part of the Java Lang package, so we don't have to do any imports to access that class. Um, then I'm going to get an instance of the current thread by using basically the, the static method here, current thread, which returns back an instance or an object of the current thread there. Okay, So that's what MT will be pointing to. So at this point, we can invoke some various different methods and stuff off of the the, the current thread that we're working with which, with, which of course is the main thread. So we'll print off the main thread name, the main thread state. Right? I just talked about the six different states. And then um, going to actually display some properties or fields as Java might, or Oracle would prefer, I would say, I'd imagine. But anyway, I'm just gonna call them properties. So, um, max priority, min priority, and normal priority. Every thread can have a priority, right? And the uh, the higher the priority, the, the more... Anyway, I'll go into priorities in a future tutorial there, right? But anyway, we'll display the main thread priority, and then finally the main thread group here, right? Um, you can have thread groups uh, where they can do various different stuff, like for example, you can kill a thread from another thread and so on and so forth, as long as it's part of its group, so... And then, then what we'll do is uh, I'm going to have the main thread leap for one second for eight times, right? So just a simple little for loop here. I'm displaying st sleeping string literal, literal to the console plus whatever loop we're on. And then I'm going to invoke the sleep method. And you can pass the number of milliseconds, right, to that. So 1,000 milliseconds is just equivalent of a second there. And, of course, the unfortunate thing is that the... Um, the thread class doesn't implement auto-closable, and that's because it's been around for so long. But anyway, um, so we do have to do just a standard try-catch um, for the interrupted exception is what's required there on that. So, um, And then after I demonstrate that, then I'm just going to display the two-string and the values of the two-string here. So let's go ahead and come up here and save this. Let's clear our screen. Let's compile it, and let's run it. Okay, so you can see, we'll come back to this, but you can see it's like it's sleeping for a total of eight seconds, and then it will be all done there. All right, so the main thread name equals main, right? Imagine that, that's pretty intuitive there, hence the name of the main thread. Um, the main thread state, at the time we invoke that, was runnable, okay? So max priority is 10, min priority is one, normal priority is five, and our main thread priority here is five as well. Right, invoking the get priority. Um, up here we invoke the get name, the get state, get priority, and get thread group here. Right, and of course the thread group that it's part of is java.lang.threadgroup name equals main max pri, which is priority, right? Short for that, it's 10. And then that's where we uh, had the thread sleep for the eight seconds there. So you saw how that worked already there. And then just invoking the two string. Uh, method here, right? We don't even have to put in two string by default. It'll do that, but I figured I'd go ahead and throw that in there anyway. Um, we get this value here, thread, and then we've got our uh, inside of that. We've got the name of the thread right up here, and then we've got the current priority, and then we've got the group that it belongs to right here. So that's uh. That's pretty much what I'm going to do as far as the introduction goes, and then I'm going to build on that here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this off screen, get that off screen. I'm going to leave you guys with some final thoughts here. So uh, multi-threading is a complex topic. It is one of the most important things to have a clear understanding of. Now I'll be dedicating some time to a whole bunch of tutorials on this topic. So but anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.